I mean, the majority of those fights actually went in favor of the A-Team. It was the map control that BCG yeah. were able to really take a uh, massive value of. Oh, right. boy. Absolutely amazing. I mean, look at the hero damage. Second from the bottom. 250k for the A-Team and only 170k for Beyond the Game. The power of Jimmy. We doubted it. We were a little skeptical. You know, is Jimmy alone enough to really deliver the pain? But... If you don't touch him, if he's protected by the Tyrael and empowered by it as well, then he's gonna wreck your faces. Olele with the Jimmy. 717, how aesthetically pleasing. But just insane play here. Great micro, great damage output, great knockbacks as well. There were a couple really good knockback plays during that game. And of course, every Hyperion, really good choke points. Yeah. Went really well. My, like, Malthael was doing a monumental amount of damage as well, mm -hmm. but Raider definitely held his own there. Especially in the late game, you mentioned the Execute, right? Whenever a target mm -hmm. drop, drops below 50%, that extra damage with the attack speed of Inspire is going to be lethal. And we're going to go to the Dragon Shire picked by the A-Team. This means that if the A-Team win this, there is a small chance that our final seri ga uh, game of the series could be on Towers of Doom or Braxis. I mean, I'm cool with either one. Likely could, it's most likely going to be Infernal Shrines, because that's still available as well. <laughs> yes. But there's a chance we could have game number five on Braxis <laughs> holdout. Now, during those replays, I wish we had more replays available for that last game, by the way. But there's uh, a little bit of synergy, I think, that we may not have caught, but that could have happened. And that is the Swift Retribution, increasing attack speed of Rainer as well if uh, Tyrion was actually able to cast it on the Jimmy. So uh, I would have liked to see whether that was actually a factor, but I can imagine that to be very powerful, or if that one didn't happen so often. And look at the A-Team. They realize already, Sergeant Hammer, uh-uh, Dragon Shard, we don't want to risk that. It's a fair ban. It's really been scary in those solo lanes. So I guess not solo lanes, in those uh, bottom lanes. Mm-hmm. Oh dear, so with the Phoenix coming in as the first pick for BTG, Rain is still available, the A-Team might just grab him and Malfurion, or him and Deckard Kane or whatever support they really feel like playing today. They're gonna finally get Kaitu onto his Diablo, it's been denied every single <laughs> game, but finally they get it. Absolutely true, and uh, that Oh, and Jada on Jada! They're getting all their favorites! Yeah, they're getting comfort picks here, which is definitely a good sign for the A-Team. But that Maiev ban on the side of Beyond the Game, it really baffles me a little bit. Uh, like, Maiev hasn't really been picked at all. She was banned every single game. Jaina to prioritize that... Go for it. Jaina did play it once or twice, so yeah. it's, it's still a good wombo combo that's a little scary to deal with. But if you're not planning on picking Raynor, maybe they're going to ban Raynor now. So that should be fine. But the risk of, you know, letting Raynor go through, maybe let the mouth ill go through, which is such a pain in the butt as well for Beyond the Game to deal with. Hmm. What is the A-Team banning right mm -hmm. now? The Haka makes it through again as well. Tracer getting shut down. Tracer composition banned. What are we going to see from BTG? I would just ban the Rainer. It's, yeah, <laughs> at this point, I think so. With the Jaina shown already, which is slows galore on top of the lightning breath with Diablo. I mean, just don't risk it. Just don't. Please. And what what else would be the options? Support bans, Deckard Kane, uh, someone like that, Alex Draza, I guess. Falstad. Okay, banning away a little bit of global. It's risky. All right, but so they better work. take a little bit of a uh, Rainer counter into their draft this time around. We haven't actually seen a single blind coming in from beyond the game, so maybe going for that Johanna as a main tank now instead of a Muradin could be an option. The question is, is the A-Team actually willing to take the Rainer? Because if I'm the A-Team right now, and I see beyond the game not banning it, not picking any counters for it, I'm starting to get a little suspicious, right? I'm starting to get a little, uh... Okay. okay. It's a, it's a slightly smaller map. They have burst follow-up this time. That's what's important. Now they can mm -hmm. actually properly hunt. They can hunt blow up now. Mouth's not a burst hit, burst support. I think BTG kind of need like to pick Medivh to like have a chance again of like bur sustaining through the dive. Yeah, so they still need a main tank. Could be a Johanna still, could be an Arthas again, although Arthas yeah. in the early mid game didn't look necessarily very powerful. Muradin. I don't actually, I think I would have preferred Johanna. I think you brought up a good point mm -hmm. there. Cassia as the final pick, the triple assassin. They got some blinds in there against Phoenix Tychus. 
Makes sense. Double front line. This that is what is shut them down in game number one. <laughs> With Cassie. Oh, I guess it was game number three, I guess. Just yeah. didn't really work. Um, wow. That's a... That is the most A-team draft we have seen all day. Olele on his baby girl, Cassia, as you said. Bruiser's back on the Illidan as well. Comfort picks all across the board. And I'm actually surprised that Beyond the Game lets so many of these comfort picks go through in the first place. Uh, whether that's going to hurt them or not remains to be seen. But on the flip side, if you look at the draft of Beyond the Game, it's not like their draft is looking weak by any means, right? Tyke is actually one of the better ranged assassins against Illidan. He can switch between physical damage and ability damage pretty handsomely with his Q and the grenades. Um, I think the minigun is also going to be very, very useful. Odin is hard to tackle for Akasia as well because he's so far away and has the ability damage onto her. So I think this is probably going to come down to just laning and rotations, man. Oh, man. We will see. Also, for people asking for the A-team performance, that deal was if they make it to <laughs> Cash, if they win this series, <laughs> where we do the A-team theme. That's where it could happen. I'm even going to run it on stream. Like, I don't even care. We can do an acapella with uh, the music in the back or a karaoke, <laughs> oh, I can say. That's going to be fun to sync. We can try. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, then, I I am. I think I'm going to lean towards the A-team. Like I said, I, this is the most A-team draft we've seen. Their composition looks like it should be pretty decent. The Tigers is the only real threat to them, I would say, other than LLK's uh, Dahaka. I think the Phoenix might just have huge issues. I am 100% in favor of the A-team here. You might be right. Uh, I think this could be the time for them to stabilize. The A-team looking strong, but so do these gentlemen. BTG with 619 that Murad and LLK is playing the Dahaka. Druid Amalfi and Phoenix played by Dancing and 3 is on the Tigers. And on the right hand side, looking to e looking to even up the score, it's the A team. Jada on Jada, Olele on Cassia, Bruiser on Illidan, ST uh, Saint Okov playing the Deckard Kane, and Kaitu. He's finally on that Diablo. Finally back on the Dibbles. That's how he caught our attention, you know. That's how people were getting aware of that guy that came in for Uncle G later in that season because of Uncle G misbehaving uh, on the venue and uh, banned from league play until the end of the year. And at first we weren't really sure, like, is the team gonna cope with that, you know? Are they gonna be able to work with that new player? Because especially main tank, I think, is such a, you know, impactful role. You have to shot call for the most part. You have to make those engages. You need to peel for the back line. And if you swap your main tank in the middle of the season, I think other teams would have struggled so much more. I would completely agree. This is should have been a killing blow, having to swap your tank out at that point. Instead, They've just gone from strength to strength. They've moved from last place to this. Maybe fifth. Maybe... I, words. The maybe fourth. <laughs> they might be going to the Eastern Clash. It's still mind-blowing to me. I can't believe it's happening as Bruiser pulls back. Current score, two to one. The A-team looking to even up the score in this series. And then they have the Volskaya, so they're going to have to find a new closer map. But in the meantime, for the moment, this game starts off quite calmly. The A-team, their rotations are quicker, so XP-wise, they're a little bit ahead. But overall, this is just a faux XP lead right now. It's because BTG are slightly slower in their wave clear. Otherwise, they are basically completely even in XP at this point. Yeah, absolutely true. And uh, let's take a look at some of the talent routes, some of the talent, talent builds that uh, both teams are going for. No real surprises. I think it's worth highlighting that Kase wanted to go for, or wants to go for the Thunderstroke. So we're not going to see much focus put on the auto attacks, which makes sense, you know, when there's a Murden on the field, when there's a Dehaka, those are very scary frontliners. So you want to keep your distance, and with that poke build on that Thunderstroke, you're definitely going to be able to do that. In the meantime, we can see LK struggle a little bit. Body blocks from Bruiser coming in. The slows from Jaina on Good top bar. of that, but he manages to survive for now. Very nice borrow, dodging the Q. So as such, he was able to not get slowed and puts himself in a better position. Gives time for Dancing to rotate as he's just finished the Bruiser camp. Bruiser Camp was head start taken by the A team, and this is mm, slight. You can see here, nice slow clear speed by the A team, which actually works out in their favor because it means the Bruiser Camps actually meet in the lane mm -hmm. as opposed to under towers. So even though they don't get tower damage, they also don't have their lane cleared up as quickly, which means they have time to make this rotation and gag attempt to mid. Uh, LK, once again, the focus target. Is the dinosaur going to live this time around? The healing from Alfurion is good. I'm not sure if he has a lot of essence. I think he used it before in the top lane. So no bird guy. either. And here goes A-Team picking up the first blood. First blood for the A-Team. Now they just need to get back to top lane and start clearing up the Bruiser camp because Phoenix has been left completely unattended. Now then, in that, that's still two towers in the bot lane. Lele's been absolutely crushing this as they are going to be able to take that down. 
Dana, a little bit low on mana. Gonna have to start burning these down a little bit quicker. Need some globes, really. Finally, Jaina's back on Jaina. Makes things so much easier for us, doesn't it? It really does. <sighs> I had massive issues in game number one where I just wasn't warmed up yet and was just having huge confusion, confusing oh. issues. Lele dropped low. More potions. More hydration. Oh, Lele gets away as dancing goes after Kaitu. More hydration, please. The Diablo in trouble. Potion acquired. Oh, but death also acquired. Nice kill by BTG. Evening up the kill count. Don't tell Varian about Decker Kane, man. He's got all the potions, so uh, unfair advantage, some people might say. But hey, as long as there's a hero nearby, Stukov on that Decker Kane, he's going to have that 10 armor. He's going to have the cooldown reduction to drop hydration onto everybody in need. And that really stalled out the dying process for Diablo, so his team could buy a little bit of time. Bruiser trying to prevent LK from picking up the Dragonette. The Root's not connecting, unfortunately. Uh, the Stormbolt does, though, and Illidan ends up not falling. Malfrey hunting his brother. Hey, there we, there go. we go. Moon fires his brother. Second kill picked up by BTG. 18, though, still with ever so slight XP lead. This time, not faux XP. They were actually just able to split soak a little bit more efficiently. But with that kill, it evens up at least a little bit. BTG catching up, in fact. As we see the channel being denied by BTG. Is so Lele looking for more Lightning Fury stacks? Yep. Speaking of stacks, more hunt. trans stacks are also quite nice to see. Druid in trouble, takes some tower damage as well. Nature Swift Ace, is he going to get out? He will get taken down here, but they split the aggro and the boss, the uh, Dragonite, is taken while this is happening. <laughs> Always nice to see the Dragon Punt from out of your screen <laughs> when someone just flies in. Whee! Nice arrival. Going very, very aggressive. Yeah. Tychus, please. There goes Olele. Uh, actually, that's a pretty bad position. 619 in position. Nice dodge, and that should be fine. Lele's fine. Now he's just going to gain a stack or two. Yeah, very rarely do we see these early aggressive moves, as you said. You know, skipping a tower, just going for the sidewall to destroy a healing fountain. But I'm okay with it, because he's still going to get the tower. He's still backed off in time to prevent a little bit of damage done to the Dragon Knight. So, really good move by 3, who's piloting it right now. And also buying himself and his teammates, of course, a lot of time to apply a little bit of extra pressure onto the bottom lane. But look at those sapphires, man. The sapphire cubes, so lethal, so deadly all the time. Unfortunately for the A-team, there was no follow-up CC left anymore to lock down the Phoenix. Cassia, once again, goes for a ride. Looks like this mid fort will survive. So yeah. front wall, basically all just quiet. This is what we would usually expect from a first Dragon Knight. But bot lane took a little bit of pressure as well. That it did. Bottom lane now under more pressure. One tower is going to go down here. Very close game, though, nonetheless, if you take a look at the experience count all the together. Despite the Dragon Knight going over early for beyond the game, the pressure that had been dealt, uh, you know, in the earliest stage of the game by the A-team gave them enough of a puffer, if you will, to fall back on here for Siege the experience. Siege Giants picked up by BTG. The A-team hovering around there. They have them aggro. They're finally going to start doing them. Illidan's taken his team's bruiser cam, so pressure on the top lane. Kaitu. Uses 619 as an attempted escape through, but with no oh, Decker, he might actually go down here. He doesn't have the stun heals. Gets a shield. One potion. Two potions. Salvo. That's overkill. That's Doesn't not overkill. Clutch healing. Deckard K. Okay, that was isolation too. Good borrow to dodge the hum, but immediately it goes into the back lines, going straight for the Malfurion. Not enough for the kill with Kaitu only just coming back from that potion with Devil's Dew. They're not able to pick up anyone, but they're still looking for LLK. Nice route by Malfurion. Might be enough to save LLK. Lightning no from Venet following up. Ruza is no low. Way. Right. Ruza goes down. LLK 1v1 power. And Druid even gets away. LLK oh, the monster, he even comes okay. back, has to pay in blood this time around. The chase is still going on though, Diablo healing from his fire stump. Murden now low as well, Avatar is still available, Avatar. and the chase is not over just yet. Kaitu eats a grenade, where are the potions? He tackles away from the potions. They turn around for 619, want to make it a 2 for 3. They can't do it, 619, too much health. Jade has dropped low, oh. tree on through, beautifully oh. done. And St. Ukov as well, he will escape. Illidan's back actually, he's looking for a cleanup job. Dancing goes super deep, he's taking four oh, damage. Here right comes now? Bruiser, looking for it, but with oh. LLK back, that's too much CC, and they can't do it. And the teleport actually dodging the Shadow Charge by Diablo as well. Kaitu was already incoming, inbound. But the animation was cancelled in the nick of time beyond the game with masterful chasing and getting so much value from this one team by Illidan. The hunt immediately into LK and minions. But LK, he's smelling that something's fishy. Drops the <laughs> one versus one kill. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what he thought would happen. Uh, 
<laughs> but I expect it was probably not that, but that's exactly what should have happened and did happen. Oh, I'm gonna 1v1 the Dahaka with isolation when I'm at half health as Illizen. What could go wrong? As, oh, zero oh dear. That was just an easy kill. That was wonderful. That was absolute beauty. That was a masterclass for every Dahaka player out there. How you deal with an Illidan that hunts you. How you use your level 1 speed boost to greatest advantage to juke and dodge so many abilities and so many enemy heroes. I mean, this is setting back the A-team by a landslide. Look at all the damage. Bottom under, uh, uh, under Siege here. Top lane under control for Beyond the Game as well. Are they going to get the Dragonite on the, uh, is the icing on the cake? Yes, they do. And that's probably going to finally be mid-fort taken down, despite the fact that they have just been playing like this even here, diving straight past it several times now. They'll finally take down mid-fort. Heroics just coming off cooldown for the A-team. They're only a level behind, but unfortunately that's a talent level behind, which is the issue. Good yeah. dodge by Lele once again, dodging out the way of the Storm Bolt. This might be a double fort play coming in for BTG. Exactly. Dragonite's still very healthy. They're going to get some great value. Hunt's going to try and kill off Phoenix in the meantime. Lightning Breath is the delay. Here comes this the Salvo. Not great, but it's all they really needed. That's all it is. Diablo just took a spin here, a 360 to spread a little bit of warmth and fire to everybody. He couldn't really lock on a target here because of all that hecticness and because of all that mayhem around him. 619, he's waiting patiently. There goes the, dra the Dragon Knight's Fire Breath and the Storm Bolt. Oh, Lele says, oh, bye-bye, and needs to go and wait on the bench for 24 seconds. Double four play, Illidan's immediately pieced out and gone to top lane as we currently see BTG creeping further and further ahead. Bad news for the A-team, 619 dives deep, beautiful route, but Ice Block's online. Good news for Jaina, able to pull back. Yep, they're pulling back for now. It's looking mighty good here for Beyond the Game as they are now in the driver's seat, quite literally here. They have what it takes to maybe close out the series right here, right now, if they keep up that momentum. Diablo though, Kaitu, 13, 15, 13 is here right now. He goes back in, anti Oh Damn my boy. god. The Tiger's oh. damage just deletes him as now Bruise is getting tracked by the overkill. So much damage being dropped, but currently Dahaka is distracted. Though Lele though takes too much damage. He will be the one focused down. Lovely drag on just took off here on Saint Okov. This is a down disaster. This could be to. the keep now. This is definitely going to be the keep now. No questions asked. Jada and uh, Illidan are not going to be able to do this as a minion wave here. If not, 619 and LLK easily going to be able to tank this. And that will be the first keep of the game going over to BTG. So here's probably what went through the minds of the A-team, right? If they let this mercenary camp go through, they probably thought they would lose this keep regardless. So they made this all in play to maybe contest it and find some kills. The question is, would they have really lost that keep if they had had the siege chance against them? I'm not so sure about that. I think going all in there in that team fight, in that choke point was, and then losing members, so many of them, was definitely the worst outcome. So going in for this reckless team fighting move there, I'm not sure if I agree with it, but I can't understand this possible explanation of why they tried it in the first place. Still so risky though. It is still I mean, super risky, yes. They're now three levels behind almost exactly. One talent behind. They're just making it even harder for themselves to take yeah. the actual beneficial fights to bring themselves back. So the A-team, the risky plays, once again, we can see why they do it, but there were other options. That is uh, the best way of saying it, you know, there were other options. Sometimes you just need to take a little bit of a risk, but sometimes, sometimes you just need to let go. Yeah. The be doing nothing is sometimes the best move, and I think that might have been one of those moments. Waiting yeah. it out, preparing for the next objective, maybe doing bot, maybe doing some mercenary camps, trying to get bot mercenary camp, for example, take a fight yeah. there. Um, like, essentially, if know. that mercenary camp pushes into you, one Jaina combos everything you need, but hold a minute. Team fighting not done just yet. Lightning Breath goes through, and three on the Tyke is in a lot of trouble this time. Is the plan for Bruiser right now. He was trying to be a good delay, good distraction onto the backside. They pulled out the Odin here, but they also burned every single one of their heroics for absolutely nothing. Kaitu is getting zoned out again. Used the 6-1 as the escape route. Bruiser, oh, he's coming from behind. Salvo. Salvo's good. Huge damage. Olele is gonna get dropped here. Kaitu is dropping down as well. And now the chase continues. Good drag by LLK to kill off Jada. Saint Ukov gonna be bodied here, and this might be the core, Kendrick. They're gonna go in. It's gonna be five versus Illidan and a core. And Illidan, Illidan, your, your core. Your Illidan, core, Illidan. Let me ask Illidan. you this. Are you prepared, my friend, or have you given up? It looks like Illidan has given up. He's trying to get that hunt Please cooldown delay. back here from the minions, it seems. But he will arrive too late. too late. Not really defending this at all. I think he gave up mentally already. 
40, 30, 20. Two, this is one. game over for the A-team. The truck has finally come to a hold. And beyond the game, they shut down the gate and they take it for themselves. Game number three goes over to BTG. A valiant effort to try and come back. Some desperation going down, kicking and screaming. The A-team never gave up without a fight. But BTG still take the 3-0. The A-team finish in fifth. And BTG will be going to the Eastern Clash. The question is, in what position? Exactly. Can they keep up the momentum? Can they maybe take down CE in our second series of that day? Or is it going to be game over and points out for them as well? Will CE reign supreme? They shut them down in regular league play, league play pretty hard. The last time these two teams met, I think it was a very one-sided 2-0 in favor of CE. And that, I think, might have actually been the first game they've played with their new coach um, as well, which helped their drafting and their overall team fighting quite a bit up to this point. But that's the question, right? How much was CE able to step it up here? Because beyond the game, although yeah. they were struggling here and there, they certainly looked like a strong team. You mentioned it. CE, last time they played against BTG, it was a pretty solid 2-0. Mm -hmm. However, the last series CE played was against RPG. And once again, they were hyper serious. <laughs> they they did some interesting practice techniques and they also tried a lot of stuff against a team they knew would try hard. But CE did go 1-1 against that. So... We'll have to see what they've learned from that interesting technique of 